Welcome back. Um, one quick schedule change announcement. Um, unfortunately, Brenda Wallace has taken ill. So instead of her talk at 1.30 in Conference 2, we will be having See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Patch No Evil by Graham Dumpleton instead. Um, not sure whether the website's being updated, but now you know. And up now, we have Tom, who will be teaching us all about uh, Auckland Transport APIs. Let's make him feel welcome. Um, hi, I'm Thomas Lovskunsa. I work for Propellerhead, a uh, service company in Auckland that uh, works with Auckland Transport and a few other transport partners. And we have over the years built a set of APIs for Auckland Transport and exposed some of the transport information to the public. So this is what I'll be talking about today. Uh, first, sign-ups. If you, as a developer, want to start working with these APIs, it's easy. Just go to the dev portal at.gov.nz. Uh, you should be able to sign up, get a key, and see all the APIs, see the basic documentation, and start off. So, um, it's been a long road. It's been a few years. Uh, these APIs have accumulated over time. Um, we have published a few of them using uh, well-known de facto standards for transport. Uh, that's the GTFS and GTFS real-time, as you can see, for schedules and uh, real-time information. The, uh, that's a Google standard. Um, it's been used all across the world, um, uh, used to record scheduled movements of all kinds of vehicles. Mostly used for buses, I believe, but we will we will be using it for trains and ferries as well. Uh, real time. So for real time uh, vehicle movements, for trips, for uh, vehicle locations, that's the second one. Uh, locations. That's right now uh, managed by Auckland Transport, and that is. Locations of 80 parking spots, uh, mostly, I believe, those, those are the um, parking buildings around Auckland. Uh, points of interest, anything that shows up on the maps on, on the website, uh, manually inputted, manually maintained. Tools, various tools used by IT again, and... Um, mostly by Journey Planner and GeoCoder. So I'm just listing these so far. I'll explain in detail what, what they do and how they work. Um, Journey Planner is a tool that is used, I believe it's, um, there's a few other options, but the only supported one is the, uh, on the Auckland Transport website. Uh, given a start and end point, it will plan a journey, give you a list of options, uh, give you a phase, and yeah, well, that's it. It exists as an API, but is currently just restricted to partners. Um, we have um, received requests for that, but for now it's restricted to partners. Uh, Geocoder as well. Uh, so if you if you are if you know if you used any site that asks you to type in address, type in an address that uh, and then gives you a list of real addresses or shows you that address on a map, like Google Maps, that's a geocoder. And we have a service running in Auckland Transport that, again, is a restricted service currently <coughs> used only by Auckland Transport. Hopefully, we will get that out as well. Um, display, those APIs are used for um, various screens around the city. Um, I'm trying to remember if they're used in... Uh, vehicles, I don't think so, not yet. Uh, cameras, there are a few traffic cameras around the city and you can access those as well. Events, uh, those would be the, well, notifications about various roadworks and such. Now, these are all available currently on our public and our public restricted APIs. And if you sign up, you'll have access to most of them. You will be able to uh, 
look at the schedule data and you can you should be able to see all the currently active information about vehicles in Auckland uh, as well as uh, real-time information about vehicles if you want to build an application that shows vehicles that shows that allows people to plan trips to um, to do anything with real-time data, maybe something related to industry, maybe something to optimize trips, uh, should be possible to, using those. We have a few, uh, um, a few big companies, one of them is Machine Zone, that has used these APIs to try to build very large enterprise pieces of software. Um, hopefully what I'm going to talk about a little bit later, about uh, our effort on community engagement, will expand this effort to more developers, to include more developers. So I'll just try to quickly go through how our data looks like, because that is the most complicated. I mean, the rest of the APIs are fairly trivial. If you look at the displays, events, and locations, those are, you do a request and you will get your information back, and that's pretty self-explanatory if you look at the API documentation, what it does and how to use it. The GTFS, the actual schedule data and real-time data is a bit more complex, so I'll try to expand on it now. Um, I won't go into the whole spec, of course. You can check it online on, on the Google sites. Um, there's a list of resources at, at the end of this uh, presentation, so you can read in depth. But this is basically, what you, what basically all the information that you get for static data. You get the agency information about various companies that run uh, services across Auckland. You get the uh, calendar dates and stop times, which are scheduled information about how the, uh, when the service runs, exactly when it should arrive at stops, and so forth. Uh, shapes is the, um, the geographic shape, so when you want, to, when you go on a map and you on Google Maps to a trip and you can see those pretty shapes, that's what this is. It specifies exactly how that shapes should be. Um, so you can draw all these routes. All these routes are present in these files for all Auckland trips that are tracked. Um, calendar, pretty self-explanatory, I think. Feed info uh, is... Um, something that can help you keep track of all the data updates that come along. We do update data fa fairly often, so if you want to keep up, so bus stops move, uh, times change, all of that. If you, want to, if you build an application and you want to keep track of all the changes in, in the transport space, then this will help. Uh, um, Recently, with the CRL, with all the tunnels being dug up in the city, they've been moving stops all the time, so weekly was the norm up until um, a month ago. Now, with the new zones in and the CRL underway, things have calmed down, so about every three, four weeks. So that feed info information present there is also pro pro um, available as an API. Uh, so if you want to keep track of it programmatically, you can. Um, routes, it describes all the routes set up. This is, there is a little bit of terminology here that I'm hesitant to go into. Uh, there's very specific definitions for what is a trip, what is a trip, what is a route, uh, what is the relationship between, between those things. So let's just say that yet another blob of data is in there and you should take a look at the spec to see how it, exactly how it fits together. Um, stop info is, as in any enterprise system, at some point you reach, uh, the enterprise decides that the spec is no longer enough and they need more data in. Uh, so instead of just messing with the tables and these existing spec files, we decided to just create another file. So it's AT specific for AT use, but if you find, so, uh, if you find the data inside useful, feel free to use it. Um, what it maps to, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, is for big stops that have um, multiple sub-stops inside. So it defines the parent-child relationship, boring. 
Um, yeah, so these are basically CSV files. It says TXT, and that's per spec, but it's basically CSV files. And they can be, they obviously have relationships, and they're sorted out on the, uh, Google's, uh, on, on the Google official spec site. But you can easily load them into a database. And that's probably how it's designed to work, in a rela relational database. Oh, I missed some. So one thing that I would like to point out that um, we struggled a lot with is versioning. Since we are updating these things all the time, they have to be versioned, and we this is the version format that we ended up at. Um, right now, it has the timestamp, the timestamp in the actual version, and that gets uh, suffixed to every ID in the table. So even though the IDs look like it should, they should have. meaningful values. For example, you can find an ID that's 8864 and that conveniently maps to a, to a trip somewhere. Um, probably you're just better off thinking of it as a just a string. Right now it is 8864 with the time string and the version attached. Tomorrow it could be anything. IDs should be used programmatically as black boxes. Like right now we can parse meaning, but tomorrow who knows. Uh, that is why this exists. So if you do want to get root or trip number 8864, you take it from the stop code field and you add the suffix as this is a suffix and then do the relational magic to get your data. By the way, this is the, um, this is our envelope for each message. If you find if you use the APIs and find that they do not, that the response does not look this, li this way, please let us know, because that's a bug. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I have still more. Cool. So we do plan to have at least one update a month. So even when nothing is happening, there are still updates. So things will change. Uh, and I haven't listed all the APIs, all the endpoints, because, of course, you can easily find them online. So just to let you know, there are guest queries available. If you want to get, if you from, from the API, you want to directly find all the stops in the radius, like um, you're building a mobile app and you want to know, give me stops in 100 meter radius, you can. There is an API for that, then it works. Um, not all of them, of course, just the ones that we use the most. And then once we went public, that's what we had, and that's what we published. GTFS real time. Uh, this one is fairly standard. Once you understand how the data maps inside the main data set, then these are fairly obvious. Once you see the payloads, they um, they are fairly similar. But the ones, of course, the first one focuses on trips. And as I said, there's a specific definition for a trip. That's a vehicle that is on a known schedule, right? So you do not have unscheduled trips here. All of them are scheduled, and if it's a, if, the, so there could be vehicle updates, buses going back to the depot, that are not here in trip updates, but everything here should be here. Um, these are useful. I believe that what Machine Zone used was the vehicle updates API. And they really hammered us. They, they want to do like they wanted to go twice a second or something, or whatever. Um, the current resolu the resolution on real time differs between modes. Um, we get different frequency updates for that for vehicles that are for uh, trains versus ferries versus buses. Buses get updated every twenty ish seconds in average, I believe. Uh, the uh, trains should be more frequent, but there's no guarantees. And uh, ferries are every 60 seconds. I mean, does anybody really care? It's on a blue, on a blue map there. Anyway, um, apparently people do care, and we will be including uh, ferries in, in, the re in, in the near future. 
as, as well as trains. Right now, the real time is only buses. I forgot to say that. It's only buses. Um, anything else to say about real time? Well, uh, I guess I'll remember. I'll leave it here. It's a short talk, so I'll leave it here for just explaining. Yes? So I can explain a little bit how this, how this message comes to us. So as long as the driver hasn't typed into his device on board, I, my route is cancelled, we'll, we will still see it as a, as a trip. If the driver enters into his device no longer on a trip, going home, then uh, it will not show up on the trip updates page, on the, on the, on the payloads. So you would have to implement the logic, you would have to keep track of all the trips that should happen and all the trips that are there and then compare. You would get all the, all the scheduled trips from the static data and all the trips that are actually happening from the real time. So that sounds like a great thing to have, so why wouldn't you do that and provide that as a system? Ah, <laughs> well. Um, so you're likely, right? No comment. <laughs> Um, I, I won't uh, talk much about the relationship with AT. Uh, let's just say I'll come to my last page is on uh, something that relates to that question. So um, our efforts in that direction. Um, mashups, so just in case you didn't know, uh, this sort of data is always more useful if you have extra data that you can put together with it. Give it some context get something interesting going. We have, uh, NZTA have some IPIs available. Motorway events is the one I know of. Um, should be useful, it does appear on the AT website, but well, again, I will talk about our uh, thoughts on that a little bit later. The AA site has a few APIs, interesting ones. Uh, MetService exposes its data as, I believe you can get not quite JSON or not quite a JSON APIs. I think they expose their web weather data as files or something, and you can parse it and then. Yeah, something like that. So, so still useful um, in a transport context. Nobody has done anything interesting with that yet. So, hopefully, somebody does. Um, TomTom has a set of APIs if you want a journey planner service, if you want to start, if you want to build your own journey planner app. Uh, that is one of the more tricky parts to do right. There are a few open source projects that do it. They're a bit heavy. Java, not nice because they've been going on for so long. Like um, Nothing really solid as far as I can see, new and solid, but the ones out there work, I guess. Um, there's OpenStreetMaps and there's Google Maps as well. Um, Google Maps is a paid one after a certain threshold, but they're good. So, um, I would like to hear more. If somebody knows of any extra APIs that you know of that are available, just let us know and we'll find a way to use them, I'm sure. So, now to the interesting part. Um, since we've been working for AT for a long time, uh, there is, as in any enterprise, there's lots of interests, there's lots of conflicts, there's, there's, it's hard to do stuff, it's hard to, especially it's hard to publish stuff. Uh, we have managed to work with them to get the current APIs open. Uh, don't get me wrong, like many people inside do want that data open, but there's so many interests involved that it's just hard to get it out sometimes. Um, to witness this difficulty, you just have to install a few mobile apps that have the AT brand on them. And you can see you, it's, it's obviously designed by committee. It's obviously, um, they work, and I'll say that, and we've built a few of them. So I can't really distance myself from the projects, but <laughs> there is no freedom to do anything interesting. 
thus HLabs. Uh, this is something that we've been trying to do for a while and now we've been given approval from Ocon Transport. Um, this is a project that tries to get more people involved uh, to allow us to open source some of the projects that, that, that are currently live with the AT logo on them. Uh, if you've used Track My Bus, and I'm guessing nobody has because there's only 10,000 users on Play Store. So if you have used it, you know that it's probably a nice idea, but there's no polish, there's no work on it. It should be open source soon. Uh, not Python, unfortunately, but Python doesn't run on Android as far as I know yet. Uh, so it's um, mm, JavaScript, basically, transpiled into iOS and, and or whatever into iOS and Android. It will be open sourced any day now. Uh, we are also opening up the API specs for the public APIs. So if you want to report an issue or you want a new feature or you don't like how it looks, uh, you can open up its a repo on GitHub. You can open up an issue and talk to us basically. Um, There's, um, we will be tracking all issues from the public. Right now, uh, the current dev portal, the one I've linked on the first slide, that goes to the API manager, and that was our first effort, but um, with we're trying to move all issues into GitHub because we manage GitHub, and we will be answering questions, and if you had a question and nobody answered, now is the time to ask again. Um, it will be, it's, we have the backing from Ocon Transport. There's been talk about bounties, uh, publishing bounties for interesting projects. If AT wants something done, uh, we might get the funding to actually publish this. Um, what else? Well, take a look anyway. It's on atlabs.xyz. Uh, we are also, the getting started uh, link is written by my <coughs> colleague trying to explain all the trickier bits in our APIs. It's, um, it's been a rush. This, this, is all, this, this all happened after we, I signed up for this talk, really. So it's been for the last two, three weeks, just a mad rush to get everything out. Um, the website, the GitHub pages, code, clean it up, all of that. Uh, we have, uh, we'll be using uh, Waffle.io for uh, managing the tasks. If you haven't seen it, and well, I'm not surprised, it's, the world is full of interesting projects. It's, it's just a GUI, well, an app that uses GitHub issues and puts them into a Kanban board so you can see what's being worked on. So if you create a bunch of issues, you can see that somebody's actually working on getting that done. Uh, we also accept pull requests for anything, anything that's in GitHub. If you find something that you like, if you, if you want to improve something, if you want to contribute, just let us know. Um, Gitter is the best, well, we, we also try to approach people who are not developers. Um, ideas would be good. Um, just plain English, no, no tech ideas about improving transport. Uh, those, that's basically a chat, the, the Gitter, Gitter is uh, basically a chat client. So you can hop on, uh, you can use um, GitHub or Twitter account, I think for now, uh, to start talking to us. We will have a chat channel per project. So if anything is specific about, so anything generic about APIs, just go to the AT API channel and we'll sort out the other channels as we go on. Um, API Dev Portal, that's the one that from the first page, that's the uh, API Manager one, that's the formal place where you get your credentials, and you can create issues there, and we will probably just move them onto GitHub. Uh, it's just hard to manage things in multiple places, and we don't have that many people working on this, so as few uh, systems to manage, that, the better. Um, a few other th uh, Transit Wiki is a good, nice site to look up general information about um, GTFS, GTFS real time. Uh, Google Transit Reference is a nice, real, nice, extensive, in-depth 
presentation of their spec. Uh, we try to keep the spec in all things. Uh, we even have protobuf on GTFS real time, which is nice. I'm not sure if anybody's using it, but it's there. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. So, any questions? Um, what's your relationship with AT and the actual real-time system that's mm. giving you the information? Is that a that is complicated, and that is why everything uh, is more. Uh, it's always complicated. So we have real. We get real-time information from multiple sources. We get them from uh, the train operators, from bus operators, from. Uh, ferry oper operators. Multiple systems, multiple sources, um, and we try to expose them in a single in a single way. So our we get to do things after the data has been pushed into AT systems. They they get the data from all these devices on, on vehicle on vehicles and then we try to integrate them into the public API. So we receive the data, update it, clean it up if we can, uh, drop fields that are not necessary, try to avoid confusion from working with various systems, that sort of thing. So our role is in integration and the public API. Um, as far as just working with AT, we are just yet another service provider, I guess. Were there other questions? Yep. Thanks for the talk. You mentioned, you were talking about ferries, uh, mm. like the data not being high, re high resolution or yes, not being desired to be high resolution. Does, it, does that sort of um, standard contain like speed information so you could actually just kind of guess where the ferry was going to be at any point in time anyway, or? For ferries, uh, ferries are, are a bit special. I'm not familiar with the devices on ferries. I'm not so. I'm not sure if there's bearing and uh, bearing and speed in those. But for sources. I mean, any of the vehicles, do they? Do they? Yes. Does they the do. spec contain speed information, or is it just they where they be. are at a point? It should be so. Time? So I just uh, recently heard my colleague mentioning that there's that the bearing is missing from some of the buses. So again. It depends on the devices on the buses. Uh, I believe that AT does mandate the same device on all buses, but we are missing. It could be just one provider doesn't have this or doesn't have the newest version of the device or something. Um, yeah, for ferries, it, they're all their story on their own, and there's problem with um, connectivity as well, because they have to send data from the middle of the harbor. So that's unless they have really powerful uh, antennas and the weather is not great and you don't get any signal and you get no data. Uh, just a query. Um, for the real-time feed, are there um, events or attributes that describe when a bus is no longer picking passengers up, as is often, the well, as can be often the case? So there is one field that's currently not exposed um, that's occupancy. So that's the only way you can really tell. So if it's on a trip, it should be picking up passengers. Uh, uh, there is some, some providers do have the capability of giving us the occupancy data. Uh, very roughly though, uh, because we are missing still, well, it's doable, but what we can do now is guess. We take the average size of, of a bus in the fleet, and they give us the number of customers on board, and we just say the transit feed, the transit spec allows for uh, an integer between zero and eight, I think, two or zero to seven to say like zero is empty, seven is full. So it's a slider basically, and we say we try to guess like it's probably full. We do know, uh, we do expose this information, but just in New Zealand bus, because that is, um, I, I think first they're the only. Um, agency that's asked, and second, because at the time when we were implementing this, uh, there was the whole 
renegotiation of contracts, and nobody wanted to share their occupancy data with anybody else. So, yeah, that's that. Um, did I understand you to say that um, the timetabling data is in a format which is actually a Google standard? Yes. Yeah. So I was quite intrigued by that. I had no idea that they were sort of into that sort of thing. And I was curious to know um, if it wasn't for the fact that it sounds like it has become a sort of world standard. Is, yep. it, a, is it a satisfactory standard from your point of view or is it a sense of having it almost forced on you by the G? Uh, it's a relief, to be honest, to have something. That's something that's used widely, or at least more widely than nothing. Right. So, um, is it a good standard? It's okay. It fits most, almost all of our needs. Um, it's a bit... The only gripe I would have about it was that they just want scheduled, um, scheduled public transport in there. So if you ask Google about any features that are not scheduled public transport, they get, eh, basically, we don't support it. So we asked, I think I was looking for information about um, train, uh, airplanes. So it, it seems like it would fit within the whole narrative, like having takeoffs and landings, it would be a nice thing to have in there. Uh, they said no. So you can, theoretically, you can put them in, nothing stopping you. But as far as support or comments from them, it's like not supported. That said, it's a, it's a decent standard and it's used all over the place. I believe that Christchurch and maybe Wellington have a GTFS set of data uh, as well. So it is widely used as well as in New Zealand as well. And that's the only standard I know, I'm aware of. Um, just picking up on that a bit, um, Deneen also had produced GTFS files which of course they applied to Google, so you, if you use the journey planner on the Google journey planner, you can see when the Dadeen buses come and go. And there's been, I know there's been work done to upload. There's, apparently there's a site somewhere that um, that is not Google, but accepts GTFS files from, you know, sort of in an open source way, you can register and upload the GTFS files from your own location, and then that, that can be used by apps, mm. um, transport apps that, um, you know, that can, can work world, worldwide as long as the data's been up, uploaded. So that's the request that's currently in for, the, for Dunedin to put that up there so that some of the other transport apps can work. Um, but what, what do you expect? Um, I've got two questions. What do you expect? Um, what kind of applications do you expect from making this API public? And what kind of things, what kind of uses do you think it will be put to? Have you got anything in, in mind? Number one. And number two, um, does your company work with any of the other? Um, regional councils in New Zealand, would there be, um, because to my mind, having an Auckland specific thing is a, is a wasted resource in a, in a way, can't, can't you share the work that you do and um, apply it to other regional councils either by doing it yourself or by um, uh, doing similar work with other contractors who contract to the other, yep. to the other places? So that is a can of worms really uh, and I'll just, I'll just slightly open it up. And um, we do. We have worked with NCTA about the um, the standards, with a design for um, New Zealand wide um, version of what AT has. So that has been slightly unsuccessful. So nobody said absolutely no, but. It always comes down to the disparity, I guess, in, 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 in si the size of Auckland and the needs of Auckland and everybody else. Um, some of it is easily uh, replicable by anybody, uh, including us. The static GTFS files, that is probably not a huge burden to create I mean, and maintain. As long as you already have these schedules somewhere in some format, you can basically, it's a one-time effort to get it into a single format, uh, into the GTFS format, and you can publish it to Google. And if nothing else, you have Google showing your bus stops on their planner. Um, that is easy. Getting real-time up, not so much. Everybody's arguing with everybody else, and yeah, nothing's getting done. Uh, that is, again, one opportunity for this. Since we are publishing GTFS real-time, 
if somebody can use that to create a valuable product for that, that will be valuable to other uh, agencies across New Zealand, maybe somebody else will be able to publish it because you do not have to publish the whole spec. There is a set of required fields that you have to publish. And if you just have a dozen buses, it's probably not that hard. We have time for one more. Could you, and it's okay if you can't, but could you share with us the underlying uh, solution that you're using, like let's say Python, Django, or Flask to, to run your API platform, just so that we have an idea of what you're building upon and yeah. how we can do the same. Unfortunately for this talk, I was planning on building um, a sample project plus maybe a mini SDK, but real life intervened. Uh, In-house, in we uh, the APIs are running on Node.js. So that said, um, there's not much logic in there. No. So all the system getting that that are re uh, those systems just receive the transformed data from the big backend systems that get all the all the device information. Thank you very much. No That's all the time we have. So let's we thank can, Tom again. Yeah.